first game of a road trip sets the tone for the rest of the series. And right now, the Warriors, they look like the Warriors that they've been talking about this whole time. Top 10 defensive team in the first half. Making sure they move the ball. The, the Houston Rockets are not getting to any of their sets. Staying off of non-shooters. They, they're stopping uh, Jalen Green. All the things that they talked about before the game, they did everything just that. It looked like they were running away with the game. And the second half, the young Houston Rockets are scrappy. They're coached by Ime Adoka. So, you know, at halftime, he told them, we cannot give up. He's trying to build the confidence of these young guys. And in the second half, it was a totally different team. But... Listen, you missed 18 free throws, the Warriors did, and you're able to walk away with a win after the crazy second half that they did. You, it's better to, to learn from a, from a win than it is from a loss. If game one sets the tone for the road trip, you're going to want to watch every game. <laughs> <laughs> These next four games are going to be I'm wild. Tired, boys. Hey, buckle up. I'm tired. <laughs> Big time. Big I'm time. But I think Fitz said it right. They won the game yeah. three times. But very fortunate to get out of Houston with the W. A lot of big time performances, a lot of clutch shots uh, at the end of regulation. And then Jonathan Kaminga dominated over time. No doubt about that. Let's go back down to the city of Houston, the Fitz and Buki, who were sitting and waiting for Brandon Pajewski. They snapped an 11-game road losing streak in overtime. They were 4-19 in overtime, dating back to 2017. However, they went 14 straight against the Houston Rockets, eight straight down to the city of Houston. You heard from Fitz there. A lot of members on that Houston Rockets team have yet to beat the Warriors in their NBA careers. Wow. Well, I took a few things away from this game. One of them is the Houston Rockets are number one in offensive rebounds in the NBA. In the second half, you saw just that. Tonight, 18 offensive rebounds for the Houston Rockets. One of the ways that they were able to get momentum in the second half coming back into the game. They're young. They're athletic. They're rambunctious, if I'm Kalena Zubuki saying that. And that get, gave them 24 points, extra points. And the Warriors missed 18 free throws. So that's 42 points right there for the Warriors. Just those points on the board that they left out there. So for the Warriors, you leave this game feeling optimistic because you felt like you could play so much better with all those points on the board. We talked pregame about the contrast of styles. Houston, for some reason, plays a slow down style with a young athletic team. Getting down 31 made them desperate. Ime Doka goes to a small lineup, and all of a sudden they get up and down the floor faster than the Warriors. So I thought that adjustment may be something you see moving forward with the Rockets. But I thought the Warriors, and Pajemski did a great job explaining it, when all of a sudden they go small, trying to pressure the basketball, you almost junk the play set and beat your man. Yep. That's the first you have to do. Beat your man, get a foot in the paint, and then make the right decision, whether it be you score yourself or find open players. But you kind of, you know, when they're putting so much pressure on you, you just got to beat your guy off the dribble and make the next right play. Well, that's really the first time we've seen them in a crunch time game, right? To see them respond the way they did. I don't know if last season they win that basketball game, but this is good for them moving forward on this road trip, Bully. No question. Not only on the road, up 31, you lose that, you have to go to overtime with a totally a lineup you've never really played with before without Steph Curry. So a lot of guys stepped up. Pods was huge. Uh, I thought Draymond played a great game. Mm -hmm. Buddy healed off the bench. And overtime was the Jonathan Kaminga show. I yeah. thought it started off with Andrew Wiggins as well. But don't forget, the Warriors just broke and snapped an 11-game losing streak overtime on the road. Yep. So that was a, that was an unfamiliar territory for them. Came into overtime, uh, losing momentum to the Houston Rockets and still being able to have enough to get the win at the end. And to me, what, and Pods explained it pretty well again. I thought he, you know, you, you gain your individual confidence with a game like this and your collective trust with the group. Brandon Pajemski with monster buckets in that fourth quarter, but as much as we had fun watching it and calling it, tell us about being up 31, Rockets come all the way back, it goes to overtime, you played in it, tell us. Looked at it like, you know, the only way to attack pressure is with your own pressure, and I think um, those three buckets I had, that's just kind of what I try to do. If they want to pressure, I'm just go by instead of trying to get into something uh, offensively because I know I can get past my man and then it, the dominoes fall from there. So I think we'll learn from it. Uh, we'll grow from it. And I think we started to do that in overtime. You saw JK take his man. Um, and then someone else has to step up and help guard. So I think that's the only way to attack pressure is with your own pressure. And when things were getting frantic there and some of the turnovers were happening, how did you individually kind of slow your mind down and have that much poise as a young player in this league. It's unbelievable. Yeah, I mean, I I'm slow myself, so <laughs> <laughs> I never try to get sped up. Um, but the one thing our, uh, my people back home has been stressing to me is when they try to speed you up, you slow down, and when they slow down, you speed up. And so Ooh. just kind of took that into, into consideration, and I know they were all amped because they're on a run, so they're trying to be extra aggressive. Um, and when they get extra aggressive, you just slow down and play at your pace. I think you know guys like Luca, even Steph, do a really good job of that. So. Uh, for me, not having Steph out there and me being the floor general, um, you know, that's just was my mindset.
What's it like to win a game like this to start a road trip? All the other wins have been kind of double digit free and easy. This is, you know, this was a heart attack game and you guys came through to win it. What does that do for the mindset for the next four games on the trip? Yeah, it's big. Um, you know, the, the schedule doesn't get any easier from here. Um, so, you know, Chris used to say last year, you can't win them all if you don't win the first one. And we, we came out here and won the first one. And, you know, a bunch of times last year, we were up 30, up 20, and we blew it and we lost. And, you know, it shows the, that the group is resilient, even without, you know, some of our key guys uh, missing. And I think uh, it's, it's important for, for team morale. We had to come together. We had to figure it out. It was just us 15 on the bench and everyone else was against us. So um, I think it, it's big for the road trip, but it's also big for us in the locker room. What are the talks like in the huddles after you've made 12 threes in the first half mm -hmm. and then you're not shooting it the exact same way? What, what are you thinking offensively? What are you trying to get to the free throw line? What, what, what are the talks like? Yeah, I think, um, you know, we were trying to draw some things to alleviate the pressure, but like I said, you know, the only way to attack pressure is with your own pressure. And, um, you know, they do a good job of putting five guards out there. You saw uh, Sangoon and, and um, Jock Landale didn't play much in the second half, so they rolled with their five guard in their lineup. And, um, you know, we just have to, to beat our individual man. And I think, you know, we're NBA players and we work on stuff in the off season. And I think that's just kind of where it came into for me. And I know JK the same way. And so um, it was just, you know, just just do your thing. Um, obviously, we try to draw some stuff up, but they're going to try to take that away. So at the end of the day, it's time to get a bucket. So the Golden State Warriors have absolutely been playing fantastic because they have been able to put together a great record of 5-1 and one so far this season while also doing a fantastic job while Stephen Curry has been out for some time. Now, when it comes to Steph, although it would be great to have him back, but the Golden State Warriors have actually been doing fine without him and when he does come back, I do believe that the Golden State Warriors are even going to be better. They currently are first in the Pacific Division, which is great to see, but when we look at some of their games especially the most recent one which is the golden state warriors versus the rockets we definitely see a bigger picture the golden state warriors not only played fantastic but some key performances were definitely shown during this game first starting off with a player like andrew wiggins being able to perform at such a high level already back especially you know with a couple of seasons where he has been a little bit more poor performance wise but now he is finally back in shape he had himself 15 points, 3 rebs, and 2 assists. And yes, it may not be MVP type numbers, but that's what this Golden State Warriors team, that's what makes them special. They're all able to contribute in all different ways and really give an all-around performance, which is what Wiggins did. We also had Jonathan Kamingo, who had himself 23 points, 6 rebounds, and also 1 assist coming off the bench. Now, although Jonathan Kamingo has moved off to the bench and a lot of NBA fans, or especially Golden State Warriors fans, haven't been too happy about that that it does seem that he is really benefiting from coming off the bench and being able to provide that spark plug that they need off the bench as well some other key performances buddy healed played fantastic and continues to play fantastic where he actually had 27 points seven rebounds two assists but also went 60 percent from the three-point line guys this is honestly an insane start to the season because buddy healed has been shooting a fantastic percentage from the three-point line as he is currently in this season shooting 50% from the three. So that is honestly insane to see. Although we are five games in, it definitely does seem that Buddy Hill has been a perfect fit for what the Golden State Warriors need, especially ever since losing Klay Thompson. Now losing Klay Thompson was definitely tough for this Golden State Warriors team, but I think they found some great replacements in Buddy Hill in other players like Kyle Anderson and also DeAnthony Melton. Now Kyle Anderson also played fantastic, nine points, three rebs and two assists. And although it may not have been MVP type numbers you definitely saw his contribution out there when it comes to his defense and his ability to really space out the floor so on top of that we also have Draymond Green did a great job leading this team 11 rebounds 3 assists 14 points and now he has finally been able to really showcase what he's capable of coming back and starting to score quite a lot more we have seen Draymond Green over the last couple of seasons not really provide that scoring that he once usually should because a lot of people don't really remember but Draymond Green was was a scorer back in the day now i'm not talking 30 40 points but he can definitely give you 20 25 points in a hurry and that's what made draymond green special and i think now it's great to see him back in action being able to provide that for this team especially since you know a player like Steph Curry and is out during this time. 
But when it comes to Steph Curry, a big, big replacement that has done a fantastic job while he's gone is Brandon Podziemski. Now, Brandon Podziemski also had himself the most minutes out of any player in this Golden State Warriors team as well. And I think that's definitely a tall tale sign that the Warriors definitely and rely on a player like Brandon Podziemski, who's only in his second year in the NBA and he's already playing like a full time player. So he did a fantastic job for this team, having 12 points, six assists, five rebounds, and also getting one block now i may not have like i mentioned mvp type numbers but there's a reason why he was out there on the floor for 38 minutes during this game and he was able to help them get this win now we also saw a great performance overall as the golden state warriors as a team actually shot 47 percent from the three-point line yes you heard that right 47 percent as a full team is honestly insane to see despite the fact that you match that up with houston rockets who only shot 33 percent on top of that we look at field goal percentage the golden state warriors shot 51 percent and houston rockets only shot 41 